Welcome to Secure Freedom Radio. This is Frank Afney, your host and guide for what I think of as an intelligence briefing on the war for the free world. A man I've come to regard with the greatest of, uh, well, admiration as well as personal affection for his leadership in that war, both in the kinetic phases of it, uh, frankly, as well as the phases that are now taking place in Capitol Hill. He is Congressman Mike Pompeo. He is a member of the House Intelligence Committee, a member of the House Select Committee on Benghazi, also the Committee on Energy and Commerce. But in a previous life, uh, he was uh, first in the class graduate of West Point, a man who went on to be a member of the uh, United States Army, uh, an officer there for some six years, including uh, a combat tour. He was also a member of uh, the Harvard Law School <laughs> graduating program, a man of many parts in short, and always a welcome guest here. Congressman Mike Pompeo, welcome back. Good to have you with us, sir. Frank, it's great to be with you. I, uh, I actually, I didn't have a combat tour, but there were days that felt like it. I I'm agree. sure. I'm sure. Let me talk to you about uh, combat at the moment, sir. Leadership fight in the House of Representatives. Uh, any insights on how that's likely to sort? Well, yes, sir. Um, we're, we as a caucus are looking for a conservative leader to take the House forward. Uh, today, I think where it sits is there have been about a half dozen folks that have uh, expressed some interest, in, including me. Uh, and we're trying to find the we're trying to find the right place. Uh, we're trying to to figure it out. Yes. If Congressman Paul Ryan uh, is full-throated and wants to do it, I, I believe he is a man with deep conservative instincts. I know there are others who have attacked him. I, I've gotten to know Paul. He started out in the Kansas delegation as a staff person. Um, I, I, know Paul, I know Paul by heart, and his heart is for freedom and liberty and his work on um, crushing the entitlements that are crushing the people of Kansas and all across America has been noble and uh, – unequaled. And so I'm hopeful that he will move forward and uh, uh, we can uh, rally to him. I mean, we, America, can rally to him. Uh, I think that'd be a great turn for our country. We'll be watching it uh, closely, as will, of course, you and I. Very intrigued to hear that you might be a candidate yourself. Uh, going to be doubly interested, of course, in the outcome as a result. Congressman, a couple of other things that I'd like to just touch on quickly with you. There is a rising level of violence against Israel at the moment. Uh, some of it has been described as kind of a third intifada, uh, but there certainly seems to be a growing appetite on the part of Israel's other enemies to uh, to go at it with her. Do you think it's likely that at least part of why this is happening is a sense that the United States is no longer standing behind Israel as it has in the past uh, at the UN and and elsewhere, for that matter, under President Obama. Frank, I think it is almost certain that that's the case. Whether you are uh, a member of Hamas in the Gaza Strip or a Palestinian in the West Bank, um, you watch a president of the United States who has um, consistently uh, sided with uh, the side that was opposing Israel for his entire time in office, and you realize you have but a year and a half left uh, to make as much progress as you can, and know that when you do that, uh, you'll be met with relatively little resistance. And so I think it is, uh, look, it's the case that you now have Russian aircraft flying within about two minutes of the Israeli borders, and that is a fundamental strategic, geostrategic shift. And I think everyone watches that. I know the Israelis are watching it closely, but I think those uh, that want to destroy Israel watching it equally closely and know that they have a window of opportunity. Yeah, that's a chilling thought, and I'm afraid you're absolutely right. Congressman, uh, tonight Hillary Clinton will be presumably inveighing against the select committee on which you serve uh, concerning Benghazi, deriding it, uh, frankly, unfortunately, partly by reference to your uh, majority leader, uh, Kevin McCarthy. Uh, th this is just a political witch hunt. You've been serving on that committee for some time, uh, you've taken exception to this kind of characterization. Give us the flavor of um, what your response to Hillary would be. Uh, Frank, I, I always, when I'm involved in something, just speak about the facts as I know them. Uh, I, uh, I've watched this committee operate now since May of 2014. I've watched this attempt to get a hold of documents and watched uh, Secretary Clinton and the State Department uh, behave in the most obstructionist way. I've watched our Democrat colleagues on the committee do the same. They haven't lifted one finger to get a single fact about the death of four Americans uh, on their watch, too. And I've watched this committee uh, behave in a way that is incredibly professional uh, and aimed at getting answers. Uh, we've conducted dozens and dozens of 
depositions and interviews. We've looked at tens of thousands of documents. Uh, Secretary Clinton has been a very small part of that, but she was the senior U.S. diplomat when one of her ambassadors was killed. It would be investigatory malpractice if we didn't conduct a hearing with her, and we'll do it uh, a week from now. Yeah. You will be talking with her on that occasion, the hearing with Hillary Clinton, much anticipated, long awaited, among other things, about her conduct of email insecurity, I guess is one way of putting it, with respect to, among other things, to the Benghazi matter. There have been, again, claims that uh, this is all much ado about nothing. Uh, Your quick assessment of her, well, culpability for misconduct in that regard. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's pretty apparent when uh, the Secretary of State is telling nearly every employee in the State Department, um, we have to have you conducting official business on official government equipment and uh, communications lines. Um, but she creates an exception for herself. I think that I think that I think that tells you the answer about the risk that was created uh, when someone doesn't follow the procedures that have been put in place, not only for the good of the Secretary of State, but for the safety of all the people that work for and around her. Does it trouble you, Congressman Mike Pompeo of of Kansas, that um, the president of the United States, in the midst of an investigation by his Justice Department and the FBI, has said that he doesn't think there was any dif- any problem in terms of national security? <laughs> that was both weird and unsurprising. If you can hold those two thoughts in your head at the same time, Frank. Uh, no, we've got. I mean, there's a significant investigation being undertaken by Director Comey of the FBI. And they need to do their work and get to a conclusion and then share that conclusion with the American people, whatever it might be. Uh, very odd to see uh, the President of the United States uh, predetermine the outcome of that investigation. Well, one hopes it doesn't contaminate the, uh, the, the you know, pursuit of, uh, of the facts, um, either by the executive branch or by, of course, yourself and the others in the Congress. Uh, Two other quick issues, if we can, Congressman, and we're going to do a lightning round here. Um, You have uh, come up on the net rather vigorously, as has uh, uh, one of your Senate colleagues, uh, Senator Pat Roberts, and uh, the governor of your state of Kansas, uh, Governor Sam Brownback, against the idea of President Obama depositing at Fort Leavenworth uh, detainees from Guantanamo Bay. Um, Why is that a problem? Well, Frank, I don't want them anywhere but the place that they are, for starters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they need to be held in the, that exact place. As you say, not, in, not in anybody's place. backyard, not just yours. Yeah, right? Right, not, right, not in anybody's backyard. They need to be held there because it's an enormously important intelligence collection asset for us to have the ability to bring unlawful enemy combatants to a location where we can conduct interrogations to take down al-Qaeda and ISIS and all the network of jihadists around them. And so I don't, I don't want them anywhere. Putting them in the states, whether it's Fort Leavenworth or any place else, uh, presents enormous risk to, uh, to our nation and a feeding frenzy for liberal plaintiffs lawyers who will do everything they can to make sure those folks uh, never come to trial. Yeah, and, and perhaps jihadists as well. Lastly, and uh, we only have a minute or so left, Congressman Mike Pompeo, you have been at the forefront of the effort to defeat what I call the Obama bomb deal. Uh, does the recent test of a long-range missile with apparently maneuvering warhead capability, uh, clearly a nuclear delivery system, by the Iranians uh, in the midst of all of this uh, business of, of providing them, among other things, $150 billion in uh, windfall funds, uh, cause us uh, a new basis for opposing this agreement? It most certainly does. It is precisely what one might expect from a deal of this nature. Uh, it's amazing. The Obama administration has already conceded it violates uh, the UN resolution. They've not yet conceded that it violates the agreement itself. My sense is that it does. I need to see the technical activity that took place. I've not seen that formally. But put the legal aside for just a moment. It certainly is telling about the Iranians' intent to continue to develop a nuclear arsenal. And I, I suspect we will see more of that. Uh, the president says sanctions will snap back. I think it's time. Yeah, well, I'm not holding my breath, and I know you're not either, but uh, I'm hoping that you will redouble your efforts, uh, Congressman, with everything else on your plate to uh, scupper this deal. You've done a very, sure very heroic well. job so far, and uh, we need to get it put over the top finally. Uh, Congressman Mike Pompeo, again, thank you very much for your visits with us uh, periodically. We appreciate them enormously, as we do your leadership in the United States Congress uh, on the Energy Committee and the Intelligence Committee, and of course, not least in the uh, uh, Select Committee on Benghazi. We look forward to perhaps talking with you after Hillary Clinton's appearance next week. Keep up the good work, my friend. Come back to us soon. Louise Fleischman joins us on Columbia and the FARC. Straight ahead.